I think it's important for three reasons. One, because of the tremendous economic opportunities it presents. Secondly, because of the extraordinary importance we have to put on energy independence. And third, because uh, we have to address in a meaningful way the real changes in our climate that could have profound consequences for North Carolina and our country in the future. Well, I, I think that uh, the most likely consequence, of course, are rising waters, which, uh, if uh, unattended, could actually overcome the entire Outer Banks. You could actually see the Outer Banks disappear if uh, we lose all of the, uh, the snow melt in, uh, in Greenland as well as in the Arctic. So uh, it's a very serious uh, repercussion that is irreversible if it were to happen. So we've got a few years. We've got to look at it with uh, diligence and with commitment, and I believe we are. I think states can do three things. First, it's important to put in framework uh, the kind of uh, incentives that will be required, uh, both on the tax side as well as on the price side. Uh, there are a number of things that North Carolina is already doing, and I think that's important. Secondly, I think we ought to mandate the use of alternative fuels to a certain extent. There is something called RPS, the Renewable Portfolio Standard, which says that a certain percentage of our energy produced should come from renewable sources, and I think that's a very important plus. And third, I think it's important states set the example uh, with their automobile fleets, with their utilization in buildings. There are a lot of things states can do to set the example for the rest of the country. Well, South Car North Carolina is, uh, is very much in the leadership realm when it comes to many of the things that are ongoing. You've got a tremendous biofuels industry. You're beginning to work on, on finding ways to become more reliant on alternative fuels. So I give North Carolina great credit for its research, its development, and its increasing attention in public policy. But you are the 23rd largest green gas, greenhouse gas emitter in the world, and I think uh, uh, it, it calls for even greater action in the future. Well, I think that the White House call for increased production and uh, use of renewable fuels and the establishment of a higher renewable fuel standard is one of the most important catalysts in public policy that we'll see today. We need to do that. We need to create this increased demand, and an increase in the RFS will allow that to happen. I also strongly believe in an RPS, that is a renewable portfolio standard, because I think there is tremendous economic, environmental, and, and uh, um, security reasons for us to become more reliant on alternative energy in the future. RPS will do that. Well, energy, environment, the economy are all now become inextricably linked in large measure because we all appreciate the, the, the magnitude of the consequence that um, our current energy policy has in each of those three areas. Um, it affects the quality of life that we have in North Carolina and in the country perhaps as dramatically as anything we can think of in the future. So clearly they're inextricably linked because they're directly affecting each of us in a very personal way. Well, we have had uh, a fairly cheap energy policy in this country for a long period of time. And of all the different factors as to why we haven't produced alternative fuels more frequently and more successfully, it is because of that. It's just been uh, not very economical for us to do it in the short term. I think we're becoming more cognizant of the long-term economic consequences of that dependency, however, and that's one of the incentives that we now see in the marketplace. But government has a lot to do with disincenting or incenting, and I think it's important we create the proper package of incentives if we're going to move forward with any success. Well, Colorado just uh, recently passed by referendum uh, uh, an RPS uh, requiring that uh, by the year 2015 at least 10 percent of all their energy be used by uh, uh, be, be renewable fuels. I think it's a, it's a clear example of where 60 percent of the voters in that state made a decision to start moving and transitioning to alternative fuel development quickly. 
That says a lot about the commitment of the people there, and I think you're going to see it replicated in states all over the country. Well, I think the most important role that every citizen should take is really twofold. First of all, to help set the example. Um, it is a profound contribution to our progress. If people in North Carolina understood what they could do in their own homes for efficiency purposes, what could they could do with their cars by burning less fuel, setting the standard by ensuring that they participate in fuel efficient ways, I think is one of the most important of all. But secondly, to be supportive of public policy like RPS and RFS and, and cap and trade systems and the kinds of things that will bring about the dramatic change that we need in this country in a very near, near future. I think the greatest challenge we face is how quickly we have to come to the realization that we can't sustain ourselves currently living the way we do with the kind of energy system we're using today. I don't think there's any doubt that if we don't change soon, our future generations, our children and grandchildren, will have negative consequences of a magnitude that we can't even begin to describe. Well, we are importing now 60% of the fuel that we use for transportation purposes. It'll go to 70% within the next 20 years. Most of that fuel is increasingly going to come from the most volatile regions of the world. Our dependency upon sources of energy in volatile regions of the world undermine our national security as dramatically as anything I can think of. And so it's very, very critical from a security point of view, as well as from all the other points of view that uh, are so apparent uh, that we do it soon. Well, I think that it's really important not to consider this just a local issue. It would be very critical for North Carolinians to understand the national and international implications of what it is we're trying to do, to be engaged and be supportive of the kind of changes required to bring about successful new public policy. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that we now are concluding that this is much more of an international than it was uh, an issue than it was maybe 10 years ago. We understand we're all in this together, that what we do in this country will affect people in Africa or in Asia and vice versa. So we all have to come to a better understanding, a far greater cooperative spirit, and a recognition that through research and development we can change dramatically the uh, economics as well as the environmental consequences of our uh, our kind of life, but we have to do it with the leadership and participation of everybody involved. Well, what I find encouraging is that in Britain right now you have both the uh, parties, the conservative and the labor parties, uh, trying to outdo each other to go green, to be more uh, more uh, effective articulators of new public policy affecting the environment and the economy as a result. I'd like to think that that will happen in this country too. That it won't be somebody who's for and somebody who's against, but both parties expressing strong support for changing the way this country relies upon its energy and how much it uses.